Welcome. This is 49C5, and this is the Doppler effect. Doppler effect is, is really quite famous. We use it with astronomy. Uh, we talk about the redshift of starlight, or, or, or well, light from galaxies and stars. Um, we experience it quite often, actually, when we're uh, stood by the side of a road, and we hear traffic appearing to have a, a vehicle will appear to have a higher pitch as it approaches and then a lower pitch when it leaves. You might think it's changing gears, but in fact the engine is at a constant rev number of revolutions per second. So it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a real effect, but it's not because of the, the, uh, the, the changing gears of the car. Um, so it's quite an important effect. What's going on? Let's look at this diagram. And what we see here in this, in this, in this left-hand diagram, what we see is a picture of a source of sound. So we have a speaker on the right-hand side. And we have a, a listener on the left-hand side. And the sound is being produced by the speaker and traveling towards the listener. And that takes a certain amount of time. And what I've tried to show is four distinct compression waves. So the first compression wave is produced and then after a certain time it's traveled a certain distance and then it's traveled another step and another step and another step and then finally it makes it to the listener and every following compression wave goes through the same sequence so again after a delay it's traveled a certain distance and a certain distance and a certain distance and a certain distance and then my fourth compression wave certain distance certain distance certain distance so you can imagine the speaker going you know bang 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 and after the delay the listener will hear bang 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 it's delayed but it's the same frequency that's what happens when nothing's moving. But then I give two examples where in one case the speaker is moving towards the listener. What you see is that the first compression wave behaves exactly the same way that it did in the first example. In this middle example, that first compression wave takes just as long to reach the listener. But in this second example, the speaker itself is moved towards the listener while uh, um, time passes. So the second compression wave is produced at the same time, but it's closer to the first compression wave. And the third compression wave is produced at the same instant, but now it's physically closer to the second compression wave and the fourth compression wave is produced at the same instant and again it's closer to the third compression wave so what we find is that these waves these compression waves are bunched up if you like the wavelength is reduced the sound has the same velocity and if V equals F lambda if velocity is the same but the wavelength is reduced the frequency must be increased that's mathematically saying what's going on but conceptually what's saying what's going on is that as the speaker says one two three four or if you like bang 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 because the speaker is moving towards the listener after the same delay as in the first example the listener hears bang 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 they all arrive shortly after each other because the speaker has been moving towards the listener while the experiments taken place so a higher frequency um, so when the speaker moves towards the listener you get a higher frequency by the same token I hope you can see by by symmetry if the speaker listener were to move towards a stationary speaker you'd get a higher frequency um, for a receding source 
then again this this left hand in this right hand diagram the first compression wave behaves just the same the same time delay to reach the listener but now the second compression wave is produced further away from the first compression wave than it was in the original it's a longer wavelength because you've moved the speaker away so we have longer wavelengths between the first and the second compression wave and between the second and the third longer wavelengths between the first and the second the second and the third the third and the fourth so again what the speaker is saying is bang 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 but what the listener hears is bang 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 a lower frequency and again I can I can express that because if V equals F lambda and if lambda in this case is increased because V is constant therefore the frequency must be decreased and again I hope you can see that if I was to have a stationary speaker and the listener was to walk away you get the same effect so when the motor vehicle is coming towards you you hear a higher frequency because the vehicle is catching up with its own sound and you get shorter wavelengths and as the vehicle moves away from you if you like it's like the vehicle is moving away from its own sound it's leaving its sound behind you get longer wavelengths and so you get a lower frequency so this is a bit complicated there's this four possible situations there's approaching source and stationary observer there's receding source and stationary observer there's stationary source and approaching observer there's a stationary source and a receding observer and there's four equations so that's a lot to work out but we have a general equation and this says that the frequency of the observer what you hear is the frequency of the source modified by this equation this factor and it's the velocity of sound in air plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound in air minus the velocity of the source now it can't be as simple as that well the question is what do we put in for the velocity of the observer if the observer is moving towards the source it's a positive velocity can you see that in this bottom equation if the observer is approaching it's a positive velocity if the observer is receding it's a negative velocity what about for the source if the source is approaching it's a positive velocity for the source and if the source is receding it's a negative velocity for the source so this equation in yellow works quite well we just got to be careful about do I put in a positive velocity for my observer or do I put a negative velocity for my observer I'm not talking about these guys here I'm talking about the sense of positive or negative <clears throat> for the actual numbers um, and just sometimes people get them confused about observer over source, source over observer and the way I, I deal with that is I picture my source is a truck and the observer is above it <laughs> it's a silly way I know but that's the picture I have in my head <laughs> um, you can work it out logically but that's a simple way of doing it let's have a go at one so a car has a, 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 a source that sounds 61, 261 hertz. And the car approaches a stationary observer. So here's my observer. And this is going at 45 meters per second. And the velocity of sound in air is in this case it's 343 meters per second it's a hot day so the question is what frequency 
will the observer here this is the frequency of the source but what will the observer here and so I say well my frequency of the observer frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source but it's modified and it's the velocity of the sound in air plus the velocity observer over the velocity of the sound in air whoa excuse me get ahead of myself there minus the velocity of the source so there's my general equation so I'm going to say the frequency observed is equal to 261 and then the velocity of sound in air is 343 I can put that in for both of them can't I and then I'm going to say plus now the observer is not moving it's a stationary observer and so that would be zero and negative now the source is moving it's approaching and we said for a approaching source it's a positive VS number so that's plus 45 if the source had been moving away I'd have put a negative 45 in there so this is going to be 261 times 343 over and I can do this this is going to be uh, 390 sorry 343 343 minus 45 is 298 keep my keep my brain cells working there so let's have a look at this let's get our calculator for this so this is going to be 261 enter times 343 enter divided by 298 enter and this is 300.4 so this is 300.4 hertz so it would be the first choice on this cool. so it's just math it's just multiplication division addition subtraction it's not hard math but again it's like it's like you can do the right math on the wrong problem if you're not careful so you've got to be careful of not confusing uh, these this plus and this negative is an operator and that's always the way it is but what sign do you attach to the velocity observer or what sign do you attach to the velocity of the source that's the important thing so there we have it